the game that Italy would have played, in my opinion, was collapse his structure, collapse his candidacy for Atiku. Have a, I have an agreement with Atiku that after your eight years, give me the presidency. in this video is I saw a video by Breno Mockery and I've had this conversation with my friend my, my friend is a P2B one of my friends is a die a die hard P2B supporter and one of the things I told him was that and Omokri talked about this in his video on Instagram how difficult it was gonna be for P2B to win as a realist right if I'm to look at this election from a cold unemotional dispassionate mindsets i do not see how people will win i'm being honest with you um you might think maybe i'm crazy you might think i'm lying you might think oh no we're not in nigeria so you can not know what's going on and perhaps you're right and i hope i'm wrong i honestly hope that i'm wrong i honestly hope that people wins but if you ask me today and i've said this publicly as well i do not see how people can win the presidency next year it is incredibly difficult to do so in Nigeria. The, te the tectonic plates that undergird Nigeria's politics, they have not moved. So you still have tribalism. Nigeria is a deeply tribal country. Ask a Nigerian, how does he identify? The Nigerian will say, I'm an Igbo man. I'm a Yoruba man. I'm an Aosa man. Even before the Nigerian says, I'm a Nigerian. This is very important. If you ask the Chinese man, how do they identify? The Chinese man will say, I'm a Chinese person. The Chinese man will not say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a um, Hong, I don't know what, what communities are in China, but I mean, you get my point, right? My point is that the Nigerian identifies from his own tribe, first of all. So the Nigerian feels more, has a more communal spirit to his tribe, which is, in a way, is a good thing, right? And so this is, this is, this is a big disadvantage to P2B because you have. Tinibu playing the tribal game, the tribal card. Tinibu is from the southwest. His deputy is from the north. Atiku is from the north. His deputy is from the southeast. What you're gonna see, and this is what Omokre talked about, is that P2B is gonna take the votes that should go to Atiku, the PDP candidates. Because normally southeasterners who don't vote for APC. We don't like APC for obvious reasons. APC has been seen as being as 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 keeping the evils marginalized. But at least we've have we've had PDP governors in the south. It's Enugu State, Abakiliki, even an at some points, Imo State at some point, right? So the southeast would have voted for PDP anyway. But now with Peter being the pick in the picture, level party in the picture, what you're gonna see is that Peter B will take the votes. That should go to Atiku. Now, when P2P takes their votes, don't forget Tinibu has secured the Southwest, Lagos, Oshun, Ogun states, and so forth and so on. The Southwest will vote for Tinibu. Now, in the North, Kaduna, Zamfara, Kastena, Kogi, and so forth and so on. By having a vice from the North in the person of Shetima, Tinibu has been able to capitalize and secure the North. As much as it pains me to say this, this is a very tactical and, and, and amazing move to make in politics. We may all disagree with Tinibu, right? And, I, and, I, and I, I don't think he will make a good president. But one thing you cannot disagree with me on is that this man is a tactician. This man is a master strategist. This man has planned this. This man has done this chess game for the past 20 years. He has put in paper as governors, senators, House of Rep members. And everything you're seeing today is a result of 20 years of hard work. Since 1999 as Lagos State Governor, Tinibu has been planning, strategizing. He even had to take away, he even had to remove Ambode because he knew that Ambode would not play the card for him. Ambode would not help him out as when the time comes when to run for president. So he, he took away Ambode. I mean, think about this, an unelected politician a godfather removed a sitting governor of, of the largest economy in Africa. 
when I miss, I mean state-wise, in Lagos State. And so my point is this, right? We cannot underestimate the enemy, the enemy here being Tinibu. Tinibu has played this card very well. What P2B will do, and I hope, I'm, again, I'm, I know I'm saying this because I want to always preface and say this before I make my point. I hope I'm wrong and I hope that people that support P2B are right. One of my friends is like, P2B will win, no matter what, blah, blah. And I'm like, I hope you're right, honestly speaking. What is going to happen is that, come election day, the North will fall in line for Tinibu. APC has a lot of governors in the North. APC currently controls 22 states in Nigeria. 22 out of the six states, APC controls those 22 states. So you would expect that those APC governors, come election day, they will all fall in line for Tinibu. Most of those APC governors come from the North. Most of them come from the Southwest. Then two of them come from the South, is in the person of Imo State and, um, and um, Ebony State. So my point is this, right? P2B, the game that P2B would have played, in my opinion, was collapse his structure, collapse his candidacy for Atiku. Have a, I have an agreement with Atiku that after your eight years, give me the presidency. In my own opinion, that would have been a perfect move to make. But now, with the whole, like Omar Chris said, the whole hysteria, the whole obedience movement, it is now very difficult for P2B to do this. P2B cannot at this point not run. He has to run to the end. P2B at this point cannot say, I'm not running again, I'm supporting that He cannot do that. It's not possible. In fact, even if he does that, his people will not even go to article. The hysteria around P2B, the, the movement, the clamor, the, the, the whole obedience gra gra, and the whole, you know what I mean, right? The whole <laughs> things you're seeing on social media, you, you know, they won't, they won't, they, they, they will cause P2B, P2B, P2B to be theirs to betray them at this point. So I would expect P2B to go to the end, right? I would expect him to go to February and, and um, let's see what happens. But my point is, when he goes to the end, He's going to take the votes that would have won for P2, for PDP. The people that will vote on APC, they've already <laughs> concluded they're gonna vote for APC. You're not gonna change their mind. Tinibu supporters, they are very quiet. They won't tell you they're supporting Tinibu because they know the kind of hatred they will get, but they are just quiet. Come election day, like I said to my friend, on election day we will vote. And this is this, this is the sad case in Nigeria. This is what pains me about Nigeria. On election day February, the Nigerian man will go and when he goes to the ballot box, he's gonna vote based on who in his tribe is coming up for president. The Igbo man will vote P2B, the Yoruba man will vote Tinibu. The outsiders are already divided because of Atiku. So when when some of them vote for Atiku, some of them will vote for Tinibu, and that in itself will hand over the president to Tinibu. So in my own opinion, at this point today. Except if anything happens that, you know, we never know what can happen in this world, you know, except if let's say anything happens. As of today, this, ele this election is still to lose. Again, I'm not saying this as a thing of pride or a thing of joy, far be it from me. I'm just looking at this from a cold, unemotional standpoint. This is what I believe that we can emulate to help develop Nigeria. We cannot look at Nigeria from an emotional point of view. Look at what happened in Emsas. All of us cried. All of us got emotional. Guess what happened? The next day we went back to our jobs. How many people today are trying to change Nigeria? How many people today are working towards making Nigeria better? So we cannot be all emotional. We have to approach Nigeria from a dispassionate point of view. And this is what I try to do. This is, this is what thank God I've learned from studying in the UK. Like... In the UK, you're, 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 you're taught to be analytical, you're taught to be approached. Whenever you write essays, for example, and I know I'm going up on just very quickly. Whenever you write essays, the essays, the essays, what they expect you to do, they expect you to talk about A, B, and then give your own opinion. So what did author A say? What did author B say? And then you talk about your own opinion. What that does is that it trains your mind to look at issues from the point of view of another person. So person A, what did person A say? What did person B say? So now as I'm looking at Nigeria, I'm like, okay, how is it, what is, why is it Tinibu supporter supporting Tinibu? 
Why is it not an app supporting Atiku or supporting Shetima? You, you don't need to. You don't need to be emotional about. You don't need to call names or cause people. You just have to take a step back and ask yourself: These people are Nigerians like us. What do they see in Tinibu? What do they see in Shetima? What do they see in Atiku that makes them support these guys? Even though they know that deep down P2B is the best candidate, even though they, they know that P2B is the only person today at P2B and Suwari, even though they know that these two candidates in this two in P2B and Suwari, even though they, they know they are the best candidates to help and deliver Nigeria, why is it that come election day they will still go and vote for Tinibu and Atiku? Why? These are it's not they're not bad questions to ask. Because these people are still human beings. These people are, in fact, I know one of them is a, is a very smart guy. He's supposed to not take it. And I'm like, why? So, so, something, so the point, my point is, you take a step back and you look at issues and you ask yourself, let us approach this issue from a dispassionate and analytical point of view. And you may disagree with me, you may not agree with me. You know, I would like to know what you think. Do you think that P2B will take away Atiku's votes? Do you think that that will make Tinibu's path to victory much easier. In my own opinion, I think that's the case. I think that by having Labour Party take away PDP's votes, that will clear the path to Tinibu going ahead and winning the presidency. And it is very sad. I don't want it to happen. I hope I'm wrong. But for some reason, I know that what I'm saying will likely happen. And you know, let me know what you think, my friends. Let me know in the comment section. Give me your feedback. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, let me know what other topics you want us to talk to discuss. You know, please share it with your friends. Ask your friends to sub ask your friends to subscribe as well. We're trying to build a community of like-minded individuals. Not people that will. I don't want people that will even agree with me. I want people that will push back and give me constructive debates and criticisms. You know, I want people that will respectfully. But this is what I also, I also try to do as well. I don't call names, I don't call out, I don't know. I like to see and you know what what why why is this person saying what he's saying? You know. So thank you for listening and um, and God bless. Thank you.